Aloha and shalom, everybody. We are here for the final quarter activation in March, 2022. These videos happen every single week. They've been going on for years. So if you end up enjoying this and it's your first time, please join us again next week and as often as you'd like. And for those of you returning to the activation portal, welcome back. Thanks for coming. So the final quarter, right, when we're talking about the moon, it's the final quarter of the moon cycle for the month. But what it's really representing goes way beyond the moon. It's representing a part of the life cycle that we're all experiencing right now. So final quarter time is the time when we're all coming to a close for this particular cycle. The final quarter is what I like to call the in-between week. We had the full moon last week and we're going to have the new moon next week. So it's time to close up this past few weeks and prepare for the new moon next week. So I'm shuffling the cards. Each card represents a different part of the mind, individual and collective. So it's like we're waking up the different parts of the mind, saying hello to the different pieces of the same whole. Just waking them up, saying hello. And as I shuffle, I'd love to see where in the world you guys are tuning in from. So drop a comment and let me know where in the world are you? I'm in the lovely Sedona, Arizona, where I usually broadcast from. Super special place. And I'm so grateful to unite with all of the global energies that you're bringing to the group right here, right now. I invite you to imagine that when everybody drops a comment saying where they're tuning in from, you can see in your mind's eye the earth and see different, different parts of the earth lighting up like pillars of light across the world. Brazil is in the house. Nebraska's in the house. California's in the house. Australia's in the house. And feel free to share this video while we're live with any of your favorite groups, friends, family, somebody who could maybe use an uplifting message right now. I know that's all of us. Or feel free to wait till the end and this will be loaded to YouTube and Instagram as usual so that whoever's not on Facebook will be able to access it. Ireland's in the house. Vancouver, BC, Canada's in the house. I'm just taking out the Hebrew cards now. Same thing, we're just waking up the different parts of the mind. Each of the Hebrew letters is like a tarot card. They each represent a different piece of archetypal wisdom. Just waking them up, saying hello. You can think of them as sort of um, different neural pathways within the mind and we're just lighting up the whole picture when we touch the whole deck, when we shuffle them. New Jersey's in the house. Okay. Thank you in advance, archetypes, faces of the one, for bringing us this message. Okay, the challenge as we have one foot in the old world, one foot in the new, the challenge as we move forward tonight and through the week ahead, the main one that's calling our attention right now to help us get both feet in the new world, in the new cycle, <laughs> Let's get a look at where we're headed as we move through this challenge and gift. It becomes the bridge to the future. We have Michigan, Canada, New Jersey again. Brothers and sisters around the world. Okay, and we have an ally card, of course. That's going to be the priority ally of the week. Although remember, they're all always within you. Hmm. 
So the challenge right now, we start off with a major arcanum card once again, starting off with the bang. Card number 18 in the major arcanum is the moon. Very much looks like the sun. You can see like the moon is pregnant with the sun. And this is because the sun is next in the sequence. It's foreshadowing what's to come. So the moon card is all about reprogramming the subconscious shadow work, you know, working on those parts of self that maybe we're in denial of working on uncovering what has been hidden or what we have either consciously or unconsciously chosen to hide about ourselves from ourselves, from one another. This is a time of reprogramming, diving deep into the waters of the subconscious and emerging new. Okay, and you can see there's layers to this. There's always a new layer to go as you move through. It's also a balance. If you, if you see here on the card, there's a dog and a wolf and they're representing this balance between the masculine and feminine polarities. Balance between, you know, cultivating and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Domesticating, you know, and then also allowing to be free and wild. There's a balance. There's always a balance. So if this is the challenge for right now with the final quarter moon and in the week ahead, it's saying, okay, now you're deep in the reprogramming. You're deep in there. What can you take from these past few weeks and use as tools for transformation? What realizations or observations have you had this week that maybe led you to thoughts of, hey, I don't like this about myself. You know, I don't like this thing I've been thinking. I don't like this thing I've been saying. I don't like this thing I've been doing. Whatever has been uncomfortable for you to observe about yourself or realize about yourself in the last few weeks, that's the point of focus. So make a list, write it down, ask yourself, why am I afraid of this? Why have I maybe been afraid of it in the past, but it's no longer a valid fear? And was it ever really helpful? And in what ways maybe was it helpful? Because, hey, if you had that fear in the past, that was there for a reason. So what has it brought to you today? What has it shown you? What has it taught you? How can you make peace with it, bless it, and then be ready to transform, be ready to move on? It can be uncomfortable being in the moon part. The, the moon card is where, you know, we either remember the star, that came before, which is where we tune into to our own light and our unique energy and aura. And from 17, we move to 18, the moon. We either remember that light inside as we move through the darkness of the night or we're deceived and we forget and we go into the shadows so that we can learn, so that we can reprogram eventually. And then when the sun comes, we shine all that we've learned. We shine all that we are at this new level of beingness. So we're in the middle of the star and the sun. We are at the moon part, in the darkness of the night. How can you remember in your most challenging times right now? And it, and it doesn't matter how big or small that challenge is. Get out of your head. Don't judge a challenge as big or small. In fact, try to identify all of the challenges, regardless of your judgment of them being big or small, in your life right now and ask yourself, how can this uncomfortable situation inspire me to make a change? How can it inspire me to shift my beliefs, to shift the way that I speak, to shift the way that I act and I behave so that when I get to that next card or that next part of the story of the sun, I can be proud of the light that I'm going to shine. What is the work that I need to do right now in order to ensure that I'm going to radiate more love, more light, more beauty, which means more truth? Because that's true beauty. What do I need to do to emit more of that light? Because that's why we're here. That's the whole point of the tarot, which is the royal path, which is life. It's the whole reason we're here. So what work do I need to do? What inner work do I need to do so that I can emerge from that and shine as bright as possible, as brightly as possible for the world, for the one, for all of life. What work do I need to do right now to get there? Okay, so it's like you're this moon, you're pregnant with the sun. 
What is that light that's going to shine? Where is it going to come from? What virtues are you focused on right now? And that will help to guide your process because it's always vices and virtues. It's always the vices and virtues. True light, eternal light is that light of the original creation, which is the light of the virtues, which is the all virtuous light of compassion, which contains all the other virtues within it. So if we want to shine brighter, it means we've got to embody more of those virtues. It's as simple as that. So that's the, the deeper question we should be asking ourselves right now, okay? Notice how it goes from this at first. Hmm, what work do I need to do on myself to shine brighter? To then more specifically this, what inner work do I need to do right now in order to shine more virtuous light, in order to be a more virtuous being, in order to shine more of that light into this world, to do good in this world, ultimately to bring heaven to earth? Because that's how you do it. So that's how specific you want to be. And all of us are in different places in the world, different ages, different colors, different sizes. We're all unique. Yet there's a common theme energetically that we're all experiencing despite where you are in time and space. And these archetypal energies have, they don't, they're not limited by time and space. So we're all experiencing it exactly the same. That's the commonality. So we can all encourage each other through this process right now, regardless of what the material circumstances are of your reality, whether you know, you're know you using your job as the ritual for doing this work, or you're using a specific relationship, or whatever the details are on the outside, the most important thing is that we can all acknowledge that energetically what's happening is the same for all of us. And it's a theme that we're constantly going through too. It's nothing new, it's not a surprise. But right now, this is where we're at in the story. This is the, the prominent part. So this is the access point to the rest of the story. The rest of the cards are always present. But this, this is the priority for a reason right now. So we're all being offered this opportunity right now, more supported than ever, to deep dive, to go within and ask, what do I need to do in order to be a more virtuous person? And that doesn't just mean look you look like a fluffy, you know, sugary, kind, always smiling being. That's not the case. It's really, honestly, beginning with a list of virtues. What are the virtues to you? What even, what are they? And there are many different lists out there. You can make one of your own or you can search for one, but then focus on the list and, and make sure it's not nothing too crazy. You can keep it simple. You really can. Okay, there are like the, the seven virtues and vices. Seven's great. That's a very simple amount to work with. So ask yourself, what are these virtues? And, and then ask, what are the vices? Which are their opposite forces? And it should be easy to identify those vices in our lives, which is great. It's a blessing because the, the darkness that is born of those things is not real and eventually fades away. But the light that comes from the virtues, the opposite forces of the vices, lasts forever. So when you identify, it should be easy, when you identify the vices in your life that maybe you've lost control over for a bit, it's great. It's an access point into this work. Look for where you've been the most impatient. And listen, you're going to go into that vice of impatience and say, oh, that's obvious for me. It's right here that I've been impatient. So I need to just be patient. And then your ego is going to trust. Your ego is going to come in. It's going to make a million reasons up as to why you should continue with the impatience. Well, it's good you're rushing because X, Y, or Z. No matter what your ego tells you, no matter what that voice tells you, remember, it's keeping you stuck in that trap. Okay? You want to no matter what, especially when it's hardest. You want to find that vice and flip it, tip the scales. You want to embody the opposite force instead. You want to embody the virtue instead. The harder it is, the greater the gift. That's just it, you guys. And you all know this. We all know this already. So especially look for where it's been the hardest to be patient, to be kind, to be loving, to be supportive, to be honest. Where have you been dishonest? Where have you not been trusting? Where have you been impatient? 
that's the work of balancing that you have to do. You've got to go in there and tip the scales the other way. You've got to embody more of the opposite force, more of the virtues in order to make that correction, in order to balance the scales. Okay, so right now is really a time to reprogram. Do whatever you have to do. Shift your thinking, shift the way you speak, shift the actions that you're taking. Create habits of thought, speech, and action that are going to help you naturally, effortlessly, and gracefully embody more of the light of the virtues, more compassion. Set yourself up internally and externally you're with your environment. Set yourself up for success so that it becomes a natural, normal, fluent thing. Set yourself up for success. And in, in you know, regard to the spiritual path, what that means is set yourself up to cultivate as much light in this world as possible within yourself and within this world. Refashion your neural pathways, refine your vocabulary, be mindful and intentional with your actions, your movements, even the feng shui of the way that you move throughout the day and set yourself up for success. Set yourself up to be that pillar of light and you will move from the 18 to the 19 with great success. And look, it's a wheel, the tarot's a wheel. We're gonna go through this again and again and again. And in one way, we're really going through all of these themes so quickly every moment, we don't even realize it on a microscopic or microcosmic level. But in a very big way, we're at this point in the story right now, okay? So we're identifying that we are about to move to the sun. How can we maximize our potential right now? Now you know how to do it. Okay, the next card is a little glimpse into the future. Eight of Pentacles. So it looks like this. <clears throat> Pentacles is a suit of mind to matter. I don't know who has my book number two on the minor arcanum of the tarot, but it does talk about the elemental suits and the manipulations in most modern decks. And I go into the understanding, which I, I have not seen written in a book ever. So please, if you have seen it in a book, let me know. But I've never seen a written description of how each card contains all of the elements. But there's a, an order, a priority order in which we should consider this theme from each of the elements. So anyway, that's just a side note. If you want to know more about how to access the whole picture of each card, that's in my books. Okay, so the Eight of Pentacles is a glimpse of the future. What's coming up? And the way that I see it with these two, this being the bridge to get to here, is that the more we do that work of reprogramming, the more we shift our, our thinking, the more we shift the way that we speak, the more we shift our actions. It's not just going to manifest the perfect world immediately, voila. No, instead what we're going to manifest are new opportunities for you know that mind to matter, that creative manifestation process. We're going to soon, depending on you know, the degree to which we do this work, we're going to be receiving new opportunities to grow into that highest version of ourselves. First we reprogram, then we gotta do the work. This is like all the inner work. Then you come up out of that water reborn and then boom, 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 you're hit with opportunities to work on yourself, work on your craft, crystallize those lessons that you just internally put in place, make them real, actualize them. Dreams coming true. This is the card of work, but on a deeper level, it's the card of dreams coming true. Mind to matter, which when we take that to the highest perspective, what is mind to matter? What do we really want to bring from the unseen world into the seen world? Well, that's the ultimate goal of the tarot and the royal path of life, heaven on earth. What are we working for? Heaven on earth, heaven on earth. It's always the same answer beneath it all. Okay, so the degree to which we do that internal reprogramming will, will be to the degree that we're gonna to start to see new opportunities for creating, for manifesting a life that's in reflection of that new self that we just worked so hard on with the inside, on the inside. Okay, you do all this inner work, but it's not over. Time to follow through in this outside world. <clears throat> Okay. 
All right, our Hebrew card of the week. This is the Tzadi, and it's our ally. I'm just gonna hold it up for a second. It looks like this. And it's very interesting because the Tzadi is actually the, car, the Hebrew letter that goes with this tarot card, the moon. And it's known as the foundation because Tzadi is like Tzadik, the word for righteous one. And the righteous ones are the foundation of the entire mission of bringing heaven to earth, right? Just like the moon is the foundation because the moon is that deep inner work that we must do to transform ourselves to then rise up and bring that light. Okay, so the Tzadi is connected to the moon and it looks like, okay, so there's a hieroglyphic symbol with each of the Hebrew letters and the hieroglyphic symbol for the Tzadi is a, like a little stick figure man laying on his back with his knees bent looking up, okay? And this is all about contemplating our own light. I'm going to put it to you like this. Remember the card before the moon is the star. The star is kind of that place where we close our eyes, go within, remember the light of who we truly are, a star. And then we come out of that meditation into 18, the moon, the darkness of night. And we look up at the sky, right? Just like the little man laying on his back. We look up at the sky and we see that moon. And we either remember that that light is us, all light is us, because we just learned that in the star. Or we forget when we open our eyes and we see that moon and, and we think it's separate from us. And that initial moment of separation then causes us to walk through the night disillusioned. Okay, so with the Tzadi being our guide through the moon, it's quite perfect. It's saying, call upon that wise one within you, call upon that Tzadik. The tzaddik is the one who does all good deeds, does good, is a good being, a good soul, a righteous soul, a wise and righteous soul. And we all have that archetype within us. So when you tap into that tzaddik, you have that wisdom knowing that I can't fear anything when I walk through the darkness of the night because the light is within me and all of this is just the world of appearance. It's all gonna fade away anyway. There's nothing to fear. That's the wisdom of the tzaddik, okay? So the tzaddik has nothing to fear walking through the night and that's the first step because you need to stay in that space of receptivity and openness to be able to learn the lessons as you walk through the darkness of the night. You cannot have that fear and simultaneously be open to these illuminations. You have to know that the true light's coming from within, okay? The tzaddik also being righteous and good reminds us that even in the evils of the night, or the, the separation we experience and the hardships and the suffering and the pain that comes with the darkness of the night. It's all temporary. It's all temporary. And if we remember our inherent goodness, we will eventually make it through the night to the light of day. Simply by holding on to that remembrance that we are that light. The tzaddik remembers why we're walking through the darkness of this night. The tzaddik doesn't say, I don't need to be here. Why am I even here? I don't need to do this. Or hmm, let me go partake in these activities of the night over here. No, the tzaddik says, I'm going through the darkness of this night so that I can emerge in the day stronger and wiser than before. The tzaddik knows that the goal of walking through this dark night of the soul is for that growth and for that sun to come after the moon for that moment to shine new light into the world as a result of the opportunities we had when walking through the darkness of the night. Okay, so you can see why the tzaddi, which represents the tzaddik, walking through the darkness of night is, of course, our main ally. I also want to point this out to you guys. The 18 is the number for the moon card. When you reduce it to a single digit, one plus eight equals nine. So when you reduce the double digit cards to their single digit, it gives you the first, like the keynote of this card. Okay, so the double digits are the evolutions of the single digit cards in the deck. That means that 18 is connected to nine, the hermit, AKA the sage, AKA the tzaddik, okay? 
So in order to walk through the darkness of the night, this is the perfect ally. We want to have that Sadiq energy, that wise one energy, because when we carry that, when we solidify that and anchor in that frequency, there's no greater way to make it through this stage. You see, it's a story. It's all connected. The way that we walk through the initial initiations before coming to the following points in the story determines how we go through those following points in the story. The way we begin with the very first card is the way that we walk through the deck until we, re you know, begin again, until we restart again. You understand? This is the cycle of life. So depending on how you've cultivated those initial archetypes that brought us to this part in the story will determine how you walk through this part of the story to the next. How have you prepared? The tzaddik is here to remind you. Tap into that ancient one within, the sage wisdom. The one who has no fear stays open to the challenges and ultimately remembers the whole point is to get from the moon to the sun, to shine that light, which is goodness, which is righteousness, which is the light of the virtues, which is the focus of the tzaddik or righteous one. Okay, so just to summarize this whole thing, we're going through the challenge this week of reprogramming ourselves, learning as much about ourselves right now as we can to be able to reprogram ourselves with the goal of shining the most light with this next part to come, the sun. We know that we're going through this dark night of the soul right now. We know that we're going through this reprogramming so that we can be the best version of ourselves, which means shining the most goodness, the most light into this world. Okay, up until today, you might have been thinking, yeah, there's some things I'm uncomfortable with about myself, but you may have just been stewing in that discomfort. Or you may have said, and good for you if you did, you may have said, I don't like these things about myself, I'm gonna reprogram them. Great, but now there's another step. The archetypes are showing us that we need to just re-examine our ultimate goal. Make sure that everything that we're doing right now, all this work is aligned with that ultimate goal of bringing heaven to earth, of embodying more virtuous light. So yesterday you might've said, I really need to reprogram this thing about myself because it's bringing me a lot of frustration in my life. Now we can make that even clearer and say, I really need to program this impatience because I need more patience in my life because patience is a virtue and it lights up not only my life, but our collective life. And that is bringing it to heaven to earth. And when you do that, when you take it to that level, something really magical happens. You connect your process to your purpose. You plug back into source and boom, those opportunities start coming in for you to make your goals a reality. So these cards are just simply refining our process and helping us to see that, yes, it's a time to reprogram, but remember to attach the why and the intentions and go all the way to the root. Why do I need to reprogram these things about myself? because they're not helping me to bring more light into this world. They're not helping me to be the next highest version of myself. So as I'm reprogramming, repro I'm going to consider all of the wisdom and the purpose of our shared mission of bringing heaven to earth, of being these righteous ones. And I'm gonna reprogram everything with that in mind. So I'm gonna shift my thoughts and my, my speech and my actions around that to help me be the best Tzaddik, I can be to work toward that at least, to take steps toward that. And as I get really clear and I let the universe know, I don't just want this thing, but hey, I want this thing because we need it. Then the universe rushes those opportunities over to us. So we have an 18, we have an eight, and we have the Tzaddi. which is the 18. So it's very clear here with the ones, we have the eights, the 18. Very, very clear reading. Happy reprogramming everybody, you're not alone. Remember that we're all doing this and we can help each other by having dialogues that kind of depersonalize the story, you know, leave out more of the material details of the situation. We don't even need to talk about names or speak about other people involved or, you know, about the exact job or these things. Instead, we can help each other by taking it to the root, the archetypal root of what we're experiencing right now and say, hey, whatever it is you're working on with yourself, bring it back to the self, depersonalize. Whatever it is you're working on, how can I assist you 
to be that. Or maybe it looks like you sharing an inspiring story with a friend or family member or somebody you just meet about what you're working on with your own character, your own process of reprogramming, perhaps your vulnerability and your communication, your openness about it will inspire others to do this profound work. And to them, it might seem so simple. They, they might not understand in that moment, at least, the profundity of the situation, but nonetheless, they will then take on that profound work and be doing it with all of us, simply because you decided to share with them how you're working on developing more of that virtuous light. Do you see what I'm saying? You could just be telling someone, I'm working on honesty. And they might go, dang, I should really work on that too. Or hey, you know, I've been, um, I've been really jealous or I've been really angry. And they might be inspired to then bring more light in, into their own life, into the, themselves, and then into our shared world. And that is profound. So we can have these dialogues about, hey, you know, how are you shifting right now? How can I support you shifting? And if someone seems a little unclear in their response, maybe they give a hint that they don't really know where to go from here or they feel stuck or they feel like they're just not themselves anymore but don't know where to go, you can help kindly and warmly and gently direct them in the appropriate way by sharing with them, well, maybe it's good to go back to the basics. Maybe it's good to just remember why we're all here, is to bring more light into the world. So if you don't know who you are, well, remember your light. It's the only thing that lasts forever anyway. And that light is the light of the virtues. So is there something, you know, that you need to work on? One of the virtues, you know, do you need to work on trusting more, relaxing more, being honest, being patient? Because that's really what it all comes down to. So help each other out. If you feel like there's somebody in your life who maybe is struggling with their process of reprogramming right now. They are not who they once were, but they don't know who they want to become. Now is the time to share this message. Or even if somebody does know the path they're on, this could help them to see that they're not alone and even further empower their process. That's why we all show up every week, right? So thank you for doing that work to reprogram, to doing that inner work so that we can all collectively bring more of that highest, purest light into this world. As we transform ourselves, we write the script for soon to come opportunities, channels to be able to direct this new light into, to make something of it in this world. So thank you for joining in this work. I love you guys. I'll see you in our private group on Facebook tomorrow, Shabbat crew for the Torah story from a Kabbalistic perspective, which always aligns with the activation, by the way. So that group is called Shabbat crew. Um, this video will also be on Instagram and YouTube, Rebecca magic. So if you want to share it with someone who's not on Facebook, you can do it there. If you want to learn about tarot from this perspective, the way we do it here, you know I have the Royal Path 1 and 2 on the Major Arcanum and the Minor Arcanum. The first book can be used as a tarot deck itself, so you don't even need a deck of cards for this book. You don't really need a deck of cards at all in life. And the way that I present tarot is from that perspective, that everything is archetypal energy, and the cards are just a nifty tool to help organize it all. And it's all there right in your hands. That's pretty awesome, huh? All right, you guys. Also, one more thing. I have a class on the Major Arcanum cards. I've had it for a couple years now. It's all in videos. There's a video per card. And it's actually cards 0 through 22. And there are a couple of bonus classes as well. Each class is about 60 to 90 minutes long. It's not like the book. It goes into the occult symbols of each of the cards. So it's very different and very in-depth and so much fun. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to me, private message me. I do have a website if you wanna share this information with family and friends, it's royalpathtarot.com, that's it, super easy. Please reach out if you wanna book a one-on-one -on -one session. I'm still available for those, just book ahead of time. Reach out to me for details on that, okay? Mwah. Aloha and shalom, happy final quarter.